So the C-Swift 3.1 is changing. In this video, we will look at the changes to the practical uh, plate examination, um, but we'll also have videos on the AT multiple choice question paper. Where we'll do some uh, example questions for leading and following questions, as well as a few uh, another video on the um, WPSs and welder qualifications. So with that, Let's have a look. So the old examination that we've all come to know is a pipe like this and a plate, which is very similar, plastic sample. Uh, look for the defects, write onto a report matrix, and then answer some 20 multiple choice questions for the plate and 20 multiple choice questions for the, the pipe. Uh, in that, getting a lot of different things measured so excess weld metal height uh looking for arc strikes undercut or all, all of those things um a fairly simple one page acceptance criteria nothing really to think about and away we go the exam is changing though to a the new version which is eight segments so it's segments a bit like this uh and in that you, in your exam, you'll be given a, something with eight segments on it. Each segment will have a weld face and a weld root. These are some I'm knocking up for some training. Uh, not the same one, exactly the same ones that you'll get for uh, from C-SWIP, but very, very similar. You know, it's quite a good idea. Why does this become quite handy? Well, when they need to release new exams, they can mix up the section numbers. Um, they're a little bit easier to transport instead of a plate and a pipe, which is honestly, for the last 15 years has been very difficult. Uh, but in all should make things easier for you. you you've, you've lost an exam straight away that you don't have to do. So the pipe exam is, is no more. Um, so the question is then, how do these work? What what do we need to do to be able to complete them in the most easy, most accurate way? Because one of the big changes in this is the accuracy of the questions that we're going to need to to hit. Okay, well, the new version we, like I said, the pipe is being removed and the plate is now split into eight segments. There's a total of 24 questions over those eight segments and you will be um, given 105 minutes to complete that. The way it'll work is each segment will have three questions associated with it. First is to identify all of the imperfections that you can see within the sample. Then assess the imperfections against category A of the TW acceptance criteria and then do the same again but against category C. So we zoom in on, on mine here at the top. The first one's going to be to identify those imperfections. Now the way this will work is you will have a sheet which will display all of the defect names along with a letter. And your table will look something like this. So we can see we've got questions one, two, and three down the bottom. So one, which imperfection do you have? Two, which are acceptable or rejectable to um, category A? And then which are acceptable or rejectable to category C? Along the top, we've got A to M, which are our defect types, which are all have a list. For instance, so he has just a cut down version of that list. Uh, so A is excess well metal, B underfill, C slag, D undercut, and they will continue on along there. Okay. So what we're doing here is just deciding out of all this list of defects, which ones do you believe you have on your sample? So I will say, look, I have some excess well metal, put across in the box, I have some slag, and I have some undercut on that individual sample. Uh, you might have more, you might have less, but what we have to do here is be accurate because if we're not, if we go and select, I don't know, we say there's underfill when there isn't, that's minus one mark. 
So let's say I've got all three defects here or imperfections here. The answer will be um, I have excess weld metal, slag and undercut, which means I get three marks. But if I said there was underfill, so I put four, that would be my three correct minus one of the incorrect, which would get me two marks. So this is negative marking. So if you put a cross on every box, you will end up with a minus figure in, in theory. Uh, you just get zero and stop. But you've got to be accurate. You have to make sure we're identifying defects correctly. Because if not, if you over-inspect, um, uh, over then you're going to lose marks and you're going to fail. The next question then is assess these in accordance with category A. So on line two, you're going to look at an acceptance criteria and say, right, I've got these, which would be rejectable against category A. So I can look at my, my acceptance criteria there, pull out category A, stick them in the line. I want to say, right, out of category A, uh, both C and D are rejectable. And then I might look at category three, uh, line three and say category C, which are rejectable. So out of category three, I'm going to reject uh, only the one now. So it'll only be um, whatever my D indication is there. So the, the idea here is it's a bit like using 5817's acceptance criteria. You'll start with what have you got? Category A is more stringent so it'll reject more things and then category C, uh, C is less stringent so it will reject less things is generally how that will work you can see the acceptance criteria in the bottom there group A or category A basically has everything not permitted where group C or category C has everything or oh, a, a much wider acceptance criteria on that so we go through and you do this for all eight sections. Again, it's all dependent on your ability to find defects, assess them correctly, and then add them to your list. If you get put an X in the wrong box, you will lose marks. It's negative marking. Okay, so we have to be sure. Sometimes it might be better not to put a, a tick in a box or a cross in a box if you're unsure because missing something out will not minus a mark okay so you just it's how i get through my negative marked exams anyway especially the multi-choices for the welding uh, engineer modules so really straightforward you get a key ring with a load of def uh, samples on it you take your sample you've been asked the question about you assess it in question one write all your defects uh accept and reject them to categories A and to category C, and it's a 70% mark out of all those possible things. Now, some of these may have a lot of defects on, some may not. Uh, it's gonna be you to decide based on the list you have and the sample you have in front of you. Um, this is going to make the exams a little bit more tricky because in reality, the exam as it was up until now is um, guides you through the questions. You know, how much excess weld metal do you have? How much underfill do you have? How many arc strikes do you have? That is no longer there. It's all for you to take it on board and walk through what you feel is the correct answer and the correct assessment. So a lot more like being in the real world than anything else. So with that then, what do we think? Do you prefer the way that this is going to be asked and is going to be played with? Or would you much rather it stay the same but have more exams? Uh, because the whole new system is uh, really losing half of the exam structure. So we only have a multi-choice now, uh, an 80 question multiple choice, the uh, eight segments and the questions on the WPSs and PQRs. 
So only three exams, a lot shorter, a lot less stressful on the day, but the questions rely on you knowing and being very confident to hit those those things running and, and, and know you're selecting the right answers. So with that, go on. As always, hit like, hit subscribe, and uh, as always, good luck with your studies.